Well, hey there. Thanks for tuning in to this episode of the Disciple Making Church podcast. I am Mike Keaton, and I am here with Ken Adams, the founder of Impact Ministries and pastor of Crossroads Church. We're so glad that you are tuning in with us today uh, in this podcast episode where we have been over the last several uh, months, really, uh, episodes that we have been talking about what are the values of a disciple-making church? And so values obviously are those things that we treasure, things that we hold dear, things that are very close to our heart. They kind of are guiding things. And so we've been talking about that, Ken. Uh, yeah. We've been talking about being culturally relevant. That's kind of where we started. Uh, last time we talked about being relationship-centered because mm. we know disciple-making is all about relationships. Mm. And today we're going to talk about a value called Organized for Growth. Mm. So we're glad that you're tuning in with us, and uh, we just love the opportunity that we have to, to meet you here like this, as well as just have conversations about disciple making, Ken, mm. something we both love. So, um, so that's what we're gonna be talking about today, Ken. And um, we want to encourage you to just uh, to like the things that you see here, uh, to follow us. Uh, everything can be found and seen on impactdisciples.com. Uh, you can go there and uh, catch up on those last episodes if you haven't uh, seen those already. Uh, we'll catch you up to date with those, and uh, we'll get started here today. Yeah, and share with other people. Right? Absolutely, absolutely share, share it. Yeah. yeah, it's good. So, and at uh, the end of this, we'll tell you about some upcoming opportunities that uh, that are happening in the very near yeah. future. Yeah, yeah, Mike, that's great, and you set it up well. And uh, you know, I would just reiterate that uh, you know a lot of times churches have uh, have really kind of. Uh, figured out what the mission is. The mission is to make disciples of all nations. A lot of churches know what their strategy is. Hopefully it's going to be following the strategy of Jesus and doing it the way he did. But then also uh, we need to have values. That's and right. so, uh, uh, and, and we need to know what we believe. We need to have uh, our, our doctrinal statement figured out. But sometimes uh, people don't spend as much time thinking about what are the values that guide us. And so uh, you know yourself that churches, uh, Churches rarely split over doctrine, denominations do, but churches usually split over philosophy or values or methodology. And that's so right. uh, that's why we're focusing on this because that's really good. Uh, these values that we're talking about, they really should be true for every church. But I can tell you this, because we've been working on trying to be a disciple making church for uh, 34 years, we have certainly said or found that these biblical values they got to be biblical values that they are. They help guide us, and they really create unity. So uh, today, like you said, we're talking about organized for growth, and and you know the thing that we all know is that uh, is that healthy things grow. Right. Healthy things grow. Uh, healthy people grow. Healthy children grow. Uh, a healthy yard grows. <laughs> a healthy garden grows, and healthy organizations grow and a healthy church grows. Right. And so if you don't see growth, then guess what? That means there's a lack of health uh, because things that are not healthy uh, end up dying. Mm -hmm. And so uh, so what we're trying to do is we're trying to, uh, to be an organization, to be a church where, uh, where two things happen, where people grow, and then as a result of people growing, the church grows. That's right. And that's what we see in the... We see it in the scriptures too, don't we? Right, that's right. And I, I, I like the distinction you make, Ken, about the, the, the church or organization part of it growing, but also the people. And really that's what, what it's about, is, yeah. is helping the people grow. So when you hear the words organized for growth, I mean, there's so much out there about church growth and how to grow a church and all these things, you know. And sometimes that could just look very simply like, more people on, on, on your weekend gatherings, you yeah, know? Yeah. Uh, and certainly that's part of it, I think. But yeah. that's, that's the not, result of it. That's the fruit of it. Right. But what we're talking about is a little somewhat different in terms yeah. of its nuances and specifics. So why don't you just kind of dive into that yeah. organized part a little yeah. bit? Yeah. Yeah. That's uh, that's a great thought. And in fact, it, it, it brings me back uh, to the way that that played out in my own mind, in my own heart, Years ago, when we were just starting out as a church, we we had just planted. It was in like about the first year, maybe first year and a half. And Mike, I got to tell you, because I knew that this uh, this little church plant meeting in a school, uh, man, I knew that it had to grow. And so I was doing everything in my power to make it grow. And 
honestly, I wasn't being very healthy mm. because I was, I was going to breakfast about uh, three or four days a week. I was going to lunch every day of the week. I was dragging my wife to people's house every, every night. And I was really trying to make this church grow. Right. And I actually went to a conference uh, at, a, at a church that was a growing church because I thought, if this thing's got to grow, I got to go see how other people are doing it. And I will never forget, I was at this conference. Uh, I walked, this, this pastor walked out on stage. Very first thing that he did, he had a Bible in his hand. He sat on a stool. He had a microphone. And there's about 4,000 pastors in the room or leaders in the room. And he makes this statement. He said, we didn't, go, we didn't set out to grow a big church. Hmm. We just set out to grow big people. Hmm. And for the next two days, uh, he literally convinced me that that was what they did. And I came back to our little church plant, and it was a small circle of people in a cafeteria of the high school. And I said, guys, I got a confession to make is that I've been leading our church, but I've been leading it the wrong way. Hmm. And, uh, and I got to let you know that we will do two things going forward. Is that number one, is that I will, uh, I will be as best I can an authentic disciple of Christ, and I will help build other people to be authentic disciples of Christ. And I'll leave the church growth up to God. Hmm. And I'll let, I'm going to stop trying to grow our church. I'm going to try to grow people, and we'll let God grow the church. That's amazing. And guess what? He has. Well, that's the way it's supposed to work, right? That's exactly how it's supposed you know, to work. You know, he said that he would build his church, that's you know, exactly in Matthew right. 16. So uh, he would build his church. And it's yeah. not, it takes so much pressure off of us, it's yeah. just that, or off of you as a lead pastor yeah. or any other lead pastor out there. And it's not your responsibility to grow the church. And yeah. so I think that's what we think. I heard somebody say it like this one time. It said, sometimes we put the cart before the horse mm. and we, we get all about building the church. Mm. And he said, no. Build disciples and you'll get a church. That's exactly it's like you right. said a while ago. It's kind of like the outcome or yeah. the byproduct in a sense. But so, if you build a church, you may not may or may not get disciples. That's right. <laughs> that's right. So, and you know, as long as I've known you, Ken, uh, that decision point that you had uh, has stuck because yeah. that's what you've been after yeah. and you've been driving. Yeah. And that's why we even do this right here. That's exactly is right. Is to help you uh, and yeah. us all uh, fulfill the mission by yeah. building disciples So and making disciples. So. Yeah. So unpack it a little bit further okay. for our viewers, uh, what it looks like or means to be organized yeah. for growth. So I, I, th I would think a couple things are important. One is, uh, first of all, you need, to have a, you need to have a process or a pathway. Some people like to call it a pathway where when a person steps, in, steps out of culture and steps into the crowd where people typically go, is that how do you get them from really being what we would call untrained to becoming fully trained. How do you get them there? Mm -hmm. And what people are people are looking for is that they're looking for uh, a map or a plan for how to grow. I mean, right. you know, very few people come to a church uh, saying, I hope I, I hope I don't grow, you know, but right. people come wanting to grow, but then nobody really helps them teach. It's like going to a fitness center. You got all this equipment, you got all this stuff, you go to this gym, this health club, or whatever you call it. You walk in. You go. How do I use it? Because I want to grow. I want to. I either want to. I want something to change. I either want to get bigger. Or I want to lose. Or I want to do something. But how do I do that? So we know that the church is that place. And ultimately, Mike, what we really want to do is we want to help lead people into a small discipleship group, which is a place for growth. Right. You need to be in an environment, environment for, growth. for growth. So, Good. you know, we go to a fitness center or a health club or something like that to a gym because we want physical growth. Uh, we might go to a civic organization because we want social growth or, or fraternity or something like that. We might go to a, a university or college or trade school because we want academic growth. But what are we doing for spiritual growth? We need to get in that environment. And that, that discipleship group is really... If, if that group is teaching people uh, a foundation of faith and character and conduct of Christ, that's the perfect place. And the goal, Mike, is to help somebody go from really what we would call infancy in the faith to becoming a reproducing adult in the faith. That's really good. And that's what we're trying to get people to do, right? right? And, and think about this, man. I've been, in, I've been in so many churches in my life, Mike, where... We didn't even have, we, we, we weren't even talking about how do I get a person from a stage of infancy in the faith
to becoming a child, to becoming an adolescent, to becoming an adult, which is now actually at a point where they ought to be and should be reproducing more disciples. That alone is a mindset that will change the culture of your church. That's right. That's it. That's being organized for growth. It is. And I think that uh, I love the distinction of making it, you know, the multiplying part of where they're going to go on and multiply other disciples. Because a lot of times it's just, it becomes just about the maturity. Let's just mature. Let's just grow up in Christ, which is part of it. Right. But that's not all of it. That's right. You know, you mature and multiplying. That's right. And so just growing to an adult in the faith is not the end game. Yeah. And, and honestly, and that's what we say here, is that that's learning how to be a disciple and that's learning how to build disciples. That's right. I, I love that. You know, maturing and multiplying. Man, what a what a good, good way of saying it. And really, you know, if you're not, you know this, if a church is not intentional about helping people mature, and if a church is not intentional about teaching people how to multiply, then they will not experience the growth. They will not experience the fruit of that. And then as a result, we'll be scratching our heads wondering, well, how come, how come we're not reaching anybody? How come we're not, how come we're not accomplishing the mission? Mm -hmm. You know, isn't it interesting that, um, that when you get, you look at the New Testament, you look at the book of Acts. So in Acts chapter one, uh, you know, you got these group of believers that are just afraid for their lives. And then in Acts chapter two, you know, you have the, 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 the Pentecost and then the church begins to develop and they really start fleshing out, you know, all these really the conduct of Christ. And they mm -hmm. start, you know, growing together, worshiping together, serving together, sharing their faith together, managing their resources. They, they belong together. I mean, all these things are happening that are becoming a part of who they are. Yeah. And then when you get to Acts chapter six, it says, uh, and the disciples in those days, the disciples were increasing in number. Mm -hmm. You know, Mike, I, I, I hear pastors say a lot of times, uh, it's not about growth. It's not about numbers. You know, I know what they're saying, but I, I, I will tell you this, is that making disciples means more. Yeah. And so we're trying to help people mature so that they can multiply. We're trying to be disciples so that we can build more disciples. So uh, we do want Acts chapter 6, verse 1 to be true of, of, of our church. Absolutely. We want it to be a place where the number of disciples is increasing. Uh, we do want more. That's and right. And we need to be organized. And when that happens, and you know this, uh, some people don't like it. That's right. <laughs> they all say they want growth until they're inconvenienced by it. That's right. Yeah, so I think when we think organized for growth, what I'm hearing you say so far is is just we got to have the environments in place there's got to be a process um so there's a little bit of systems and structures that we've got to kind of put that's in right. place right? That's right i think what happens a lot of times is churches do experience growth maybe we call it dumb growth i don't know it just happens mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. uh, because god decides to bless them or something like that and then they start getting organized for growth but really if we if we build the structures and systems then that will get us to an outcome that we want yeah. so and so you're right so when we get there and that growth does happen I mean, growth creates issues. Mm. And to your point you just made, yeah. a lot of people don't like it very much because yeah. it kind of changes the game a little bit and yeah. things in, in terms of environments and stuff. Yeah. So talk about yeah. that a little bit. Well, I, I, I got to go back to dumb growth for two. Okay. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's the first time I ever heard of that statement. But that is that is honestly so true. Man. Well, sometimes you know, it, it just, just happens. Yeah, you know? yeah. And unintentional growth, right? Maybe that's the better word. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, I like dumb growth. That's and if God brings it, he can't really call it dumb, I guess. Uh, that's yeah. true, man. But that'd be a good article to write right there, a good blog. But, uh, but no, once you have growth, you know, you have growing pains. Right. But you know what? If you got a child, you want your child to grow. And so that means you got to buy more clothes and you got to, you got to, buy more food and you got to get more. I mean, growth has challenges and it is sometimes inconvenient and uncomfortable because growth stretches us. And you can either have one or two things. You can either have a growing church or you can have a plateaued church or a dying church, three mm, things. Yeah. And so when you think about the alternatives, when you think about, oh my gosh, so yeah, we may have to add more services, get people to come to, you know, more more different times, that kind of thing. Uh, it in the end, it is all worth it because the mission matters. Right. And so, 
Uh, you know, it might mean I don't get to park in the same place. I don't get to sit in the same seat. And quite honestly, those are conveniences that we just get very comfortable with. And in the grand scheme of things and in the light of eternity, they really don't matter. Mm. And we need to be willing to, we need to be willing to do what it takes, number one, to have growth in our own lives. And then number two, we need to be willing to do what it takes to see the organization grow, That's to be right. able to, uh, to start new groups. Yeah. You know, if you have a little small group and you really like everybody and everybody's comfortable and everybody wants to stay together, if you're going to be growing, you're going to have to change That's and right. you're going to have to start in other groups. That's right. Which means structures will have to change. Things will have to change. Environments will have to change. And people don't like change. That's right. You know, so that comes back to the leaders to cast that vision for that. That's right. And kind of keep people moving in that direction because of what you just said, the mission does matter yeah. most. So. And you know what you think about this is this is everything we're talking about is found in the life of Christ. That's right. Because when Jesus got ready to to head back to ascend back to heaven, he gathers his disciples and he says, now, "You guys go make more disciples." And so at that point, their group's going to launch, <laughs> their group's going to birth, and they're going to go different ways, but they're going to continue to fulfill the mission. And that's such a big part of, you know, really helping a church to become a, a growing church. And so, you know, as you think about this, Mike, and you've you've planted a church and you've been a part of, you know, uh, our church and all that. So what would you what would you say to maybe the pastor that's watching or the maybe church planner is saying, you know, how do I how do I help people grow? Because if we're helping people grow. And getting them to become reproducing, mature, and multiplying disciples, the growth of the church, God will take care of the church itself. What would you What would you say to that person that's listening today, going, "How do I make this work?" Well, I think I would definitely just, you know, I've always emphasized the mission, and giving your life to the mission. And you know, I think if anybody has ever been in a disciple making environment of any kind, even if you want to just simply think of that as a discipleship group. They certainly have experienced growth in their own life mm -hmm. and life change as well. And that life change has affected probably everything about them, their family, their home, their work, you know, everything. And, and I think, OK, well, don't you want that for someone else? Mm -hmm. And so what I would say is just give your life to the mm -hmm. mission and get involved with that, you know, either on the being side of it first, you know, happening to you. And, and then once it happens to you, then you build, you, you, you go after it and helping others. So you just be and build. So. Mm -hmm. I, it, to me, it just comes back to the mission, just living your life for the mission. Mm. And, um, and yeah, I think all of us, even those who are in disciple-making environments, you know, there, there's always going to be a push against mm. our, our inertia towards selfishness, mm. you know, to where we got to be pushed to think, okay, well, I got to give up this, like you were saying a while ago, my parking spot or something else, you know, mm. uh, for the sake of the mission. You know, we always have to fight against that. Mm. But I think the idea would be just to, to consistently encourage them. Once you're in it and you've experienced it, then you know the power of it. So why not give your life to that? Yeah. And then when you're giving your life to it, you constantly are pushing others to do the same. And so and I think that's how it grows. Yeah. So Mike, I've been uh, doing, a, I did a series a while back on these values in our church. And so uh, I talked about this idea of organized for growth. And so uh, uh, let's just take a minute and just watch a short clip uh, from that, that message. Because what it means is, is because we are organized for growth, is that we will value being structured for growth. Is that we will value being structured for growth. Now, I, I, I know that you guys don't think about this stuff very much because you just, you just show up on the weekends or you're involved, but you, get in my world for a minute. Here we go. Not only do we value growth, our entire ministry is designed for growth. Our entire ministry, this piece right here that you're in now, our entire ministry is designed to help people out there that are far from God, that are untrained seekers, ultimately become fully trained disciples of Jesus Christ. That's it. That's what we do. That's what we do. In fact, can I just ask you to think about this for a minute? If that's not what a church is doing, what on earth are they doing? If you're not trying to help people that are far from God becoming world changers, leaders for God, 
then what you're saying is that we just exist to help untrained seekers become untrained followers. What you're saying is let's just all come and be dumb together. I mean, literally, that, what you're saying is let's just all show up every week and don't make any difference in the world. No, what we do in here changes what we do out there. Come on. This is not about us just taking care of us. It's not about us just singing things we want to sing here and things we want to hear. I, no. We're not a nursery. We weren't planning to be a nursery to change diapers and feed people. We're designed to be an army Amen. taking territory and attacking the enemy. Amen. Well, that's a great uh, word there, Ken, and I appreciate you sharing that with our viewers. And as we kind of bring this to a close today, um, just want to remind our viewers that uh, something we say all the time, Ken, is that, you know, we're not the experts. Uh, we are practitioners, and this is why we do this, is because we are trying our hardest to flesh it out in our context. Uh, but we also have the heart to help share what we've learned. And so uh, we have all kind of opportunities for you. Uh, if we can be of help to you, obviously we have tons of resources at impactdisciples.com. Uh, you can just go to the free resources section. There's things there you can download, things you can do. There's also all kind of things that we, we do provide that you can purchase, like curriculums and so forth. Mm -hmm. um, so there's discipleship or disciple-making seminars. We can come to your context and, and share some of these principles. Uh, we do disciple-making equipping groups or, or disciple-making pastor equipping groups, which are online groups. Mm -hmm. We've got several of those going on. And uh, a real big event that we definitely mm -hmm. want to invite you to is coming up. And Ken, it's really not that far away. It's not far Why don't at all. Why don't you tell them what's going to happen in January? Yeah, January 26th and 27th. That's a Friday and a Saturday. We have our annual Disciple Making Summit. It really is a place to come learn all things about how to be a, a multiplying disciple making church. And so uh, we'll have some pre-conferences on Friday that will begin that morning. And then we'll also have uh, several main session speakers beginning Friday night and Saturday. Uh, it's going to be at our... Um, our Sharpsburg campus on Highway 16. All you got to do is go to uh, impactdisciples.com and you can get all the scoop and all the information on how to register and what those pre-conferences are and what those main sessions will be like. And all I can tell you is this, if you got uh, a desire at all for learning more about what does it mean uh, to really make disciples that multiply, this is the seminar for you. This is the conference for you. It's a, a once a year event and it'll be a very, very minimal cost and it'll be well worth you coming and bringing a team from your church. So we'd love to see you there. I think, I guarantee you, uh, you won't regret it. Yeah, definitely. The South Mickey Summit, uh, last weekend of January, I encourage you to come and uh, don't forget to like and share. And thanks for watching today. We'll catch you next time.